Zombie games. Done right and you get a masterpiece. Done wrong and you'll get garbage. Which side is Dying Light 2 on? It's theory time! Hey hey hey! I'm the Global Cherry and we will theorize things to expect for Dying Light 2, as well as uncover Aiden Caldwell's true identity. The excitement for that game has been spreading faster than polio. Before we begin, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and enjoy the show! To recap Dying Light 1, the protagonist Kyle Crane worked for the Global Relief Efforts, an antagonistic humanitarian organization, and he conducted operations for them within the infected city of Haran. He later discovers that the GRE wanted to weaponize the virus instead of finding the cure. The game ends with them telling the GRE to shove their research in the place that don't shine. Dying Light 2 takes place 15 years after the zombie apocalypse, and survivors were rebuilding civilization on top of buildings. More mutated zombies continue to lurk in the streets. In other words, they're f Where does our mystery man Aiden Caldwell enter in the story? Well, in this gritty world, this man has a dark secret. Aiden and his sister Mia were tested in a lab by the GRE. Perhaps they have already been infected, but were able to stay human resulting in possessing special abilities. So, the GRE might have found value in weaponizing these children. Sounds like child labor. Aiden and his sister went through so much suffering, being constantly treated like lab rats until a fire occurred. At the time of the fire, Aiden was five. His father rescues him from the fire, but was only able to save him, unable to find his sister. His sister was left in the city nowhere to be seen. After the rescue, Aiden's father taught his son a valuable lesson, to never forget who he was and where he came from. The mother went to buy milk in the store and never came back. There was no information on what happened to her, but only that the father is decreased. I mean deceased. If the father decreased, ho! Oh. Mama left for a different reason. A newly released trailer this week from the Game Awards cleared the picture of Aiden's true story. Aiden could be the little boy in the trailer, and he was in danger once more. His father is the man with the crossbow scrambling quickly to save his precious boy, but runs into two survivors taking refuge in a room with UV light. His father mistakenly turns off the UV light, leaving survivors to be killed by zombies. In his daring escape of jumping through a window, he gets attacked by a banshee. <laughs> causing a slow fall to his death. Aiden witnessed his father's death, which becomes his greatest pain. Since then, he sees attachment as deadly, but he took his father's words to heart to never forget his identity. He won't let violence turn him into an animal. Other theorists have theorized that the little boy was an Aiden, but is going to be a key character in finding a cure for the virus, and the ruby necklace around the banshee is in fact the cure. However, mm, we won't be exactly sure till we play the game, so let's stick to my Aiden theory. As defenseless as Aiden was at that time, he joins a group of outsiders called the Pilgrims, and hones his combat, parkour skills, and infected ability developed from the lab. Couldn't you come up with the more original name? How did you become a pilgrim? Does that mean you're a murderer? Well, I've had to kill people, but I'm not a murderer. Now grown up, he becomes a man with a mission. He returns to the city of Illidor alone in search of his missing sister. But his secondary objective was also to find a cure for the infection. He becomes like a mercenary helping different districts like the Peacekeepers, Renegades, Survivors, and the Night Runners in returning to normalcy. Night Runners are gone. Finished. A myth. Whichever faction he sides with, people he trusts, or choices he makes, will heavily impact the course of the story and his future. With many different future playthroughs, we'll be able to influence Aiden's fighting style, incorporating parkour, <laughs> archery, <laughs> deteriorating crafted weapons, and Aiden's control over his infection. He wears a biomarker on his wrist that shows the level of his infection in the bloodstream, red being at risk of turning. I christen you a citizen of Villador. <laughs> You're about to turn. Get into the night fast. Unlike Kyle Crane, he uses his infection as a strength. A timer ticks till nighttime where we can see Aiden's hidden abilities. At nighttime or when entering a dark zone, Aiden becomes more infected the longer he stays until finding a UV light. It's because he inhaled toxins of a Fortnite gamer's house. <coughs> so disgusting. <coughs> the UV light is the only source keeping him human. To some extent, if Aiden stays in the dark long enough, he becomes stronger and quicker like a zombie. Stay in the dark zone for more than seven and a half minutes, and he'll become a zombie ending the game. With his innate abilities, Aiden protects others, but he learns to protect himself from the night terrors of many new zombie types. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
Sneaking past their nest at night without alerting them will give Aiden special perks, but getting caught will earn him a scary dark chase on a difficulty level of 1 to 4. Let me give you a tip. If a volatile zombie jumps at you, here's what you can do. Just pray. Apart from Aiden's aloof sight with superhuman abilities, he is more humane. He loves parkour and having fun, occasionally murmuring to himself, giggling, and complimenting himself after performing an awesome parkour move. <laughs> he adores the invigorating feeling of wall running, using opponents as a stepping stool, drop kicking them, and paragliding around this beautiful city. Look closely at the release gameplay, and Aiden will crack jokes himself, and also listen to others' terrible jokes. Aiden, how's it going? You alive, man? Fuck, I'm getting sentimental. I haven't said that to anyone since my third divorce. I appreciate it, but don't get your hopes up. Not the marrying kind. This man knows that he is a badass, and the developers wanted to make him cooler by having the music match his momentum during his runs. That's right, nuanced music. An interesting fact said by Aiden's voice actor Jonah Scott was that Aiden's character was based on the superhero archetype Nightwing, with the map four times bigger than the previous Dying Light game. Who knows how much impact our Nightwing will create? With seven regions to explore, I guess we'll find out. For my last theory, I believe Kyle Crane will be placed in Dying Light 2 as a night hunter, a zombie predator. In the Dying Light DLC, his canon ending was becoming a sentient volatile zombie after killing the character Mother. Mother was a leading figure of a cult called the Children of the Sun, where they were rumored to be safe from the infection by staying in a gas, taming zombies who approached them. The DLC revealed that the gas in liquid form turns somebody faster. Kyle believed that the liquid could cure him, but boy was he wrong. Aiden Caldwell does not know Kyle Crane, but he could potentially face Kyle in a boss fight. Since Kyle Crane was a fan favorite character, I think the devs will pay homage to him by making him a crucial character. Other additional features that will be added to Dying Light 2 are co-op mode and fixed issues addressed by the community, like too much bloating and parkour, or gore complexity. After all your memes and complaints to Techland, congratulations! You no longer have to worry! Your character will not float like Neil Armstrong on the moon, but will jump normally. And the gore will be more realistic, as attacking your opponent's joints tears their ligaments off, you sadists. Don't look at me like that. Dying Light 2 co-op mode will be different from Dying Light 1, as you can finally customize your character instead of fighting amongst Aiden Caldwell or Kyle Crane clones. This game is going to be nuts. Techland was already such a tease in delaying the release date from December to February. They even promised a Dead Island 2 game, but how many years has it been, hmm? I am anticipating this game because of how much effort the devs are putting to make it an amazing experience. At least they're trying to make a game everyone wants to play, unlike a trash zombie game. Last of Us 2. Don't come after me, please. I hope you enjoyed my theory. And if you want more theories for Dying Light or other games, let me know. And if you have already heard these theories, shh. Also, comment down what you think of Dying Light 2 and your theories on it. Will it be successful and meet everyone's expectations? Thank you for watching, and that's all.